here are all the parts that makes up the Zaku 2FZ or the Zaku Kai RE100 all complete all painted all accounted accounted for made sure that I have everything here all the inner frame parts all the uh, green parts both the darker and the lighter green tones some of the darker parts gold and some detail parts that I worked on now I mentioned before that I'm going to try the um, the burnt blue technique that I've seen people do I know there's more to this and uh, I need to see more people show me what they're doing now what I did was with the red already painted and the edges already uh, taken care of I took some masking tape took a scissor and cut the edges so I can paint the blue there and by removing this there it is I don't know if you could see it that came out pretty nice yep pretty nice good I did that I didn't do the back and side thrusters on the legs because don't know how much they're going to show. And in all due fairness, I was like done with this. Um, and by the way, I was using Indigo Blue by Eloclad 2 paints to get that nice little burnt effect look to it that you see there. Uh, did some silver there. I didn't paint the other one of this because in reality I was getting a little tired now. But uh, this one, I wanted to paint the other one, um, the flame uh, effect. Maybe I'll do it later on because I still have it. Maybe or not. I'll, I'll just, I'll just probably forget. Uh, now, do you see a problem here? Well. The problem is, though, the green that's supposed to be light and pre-shaded and the green that's supposed to be dark and pre-shaded are almost virtually the same. But I made every effort to pour more darker green tones on the parts that was there just to show some sort of um, color separation. There's no way you can do pre-shading on dark colored parts. It's virtually, well, maybe I'll maybe, probably sh shoot myself in the foot if I see it saying that, but it's hard to, to pull that off. Um, the green is near black, so the only thing I can probably think, maybe I should have Prime, like I said, prime the whole thing black, but then of course I won't get the pre shading. Somebody's going to probably tell me there's another way of doing that and explain it to me, show it on the video, or link it on my Facebook page or Instagram. And I'm going to say, oh, so that's how you do it. I've seen people do pre shading with charcoal and gray, and that is so, so sick that. I, I don't know. I gotta. I gotta watch it again. Maybe a couple of times to get the feel of it. Um, but fine, no big deal. All the darker parts are there. All the lighter parts are here. The darker spike shield is over there. The shoulder plate is there. Uh, I didn't do a, a complete frame build up because obviously there were parts that go in here and there. But with that being said. Let's put this guy together and see how it looks overall. And here it is. The 1-100 scale RE100 Zaku 2FZ or Zaku Kai from 0080 or the pocket is now complete. Look at that. Actually, let's, can I zoom in a bit more right here? There you go. Mm -mm. 
<clears throat> One of the grenades fell. I'm trying to find find it where it fell. It's like where the hell did it go? I'll find it. It's no big deal. But yeah. Alright. Give you like a grenade already used in combat. But the pre-shading came out really, really nice. Very nice. Um, it, it is granted that I am going to weather this guy. Give it a little bit more detail. But first I want to show this overall and see how it looks. Especially when I get on the umbilicals. Back skirt looks really nice. Thrusters look okay. Um, I didn't realize this until now that there is a definite, definite pattern there. Let me see if I can get it from the other, from the other side. Pull this out a bit. Flip it about. Oh no, they're all the same. Oh, like two of the. Oh, there are two different ones and patterns in this. Oh, okay, you know what I'll do. We'll just do that. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Sorry, Miguel. I should have. I should have looked at those thrusters a little bit better. Let me just put this back here. Come on, get in there. Get in. Wait. Jesus. I'm able to get into one. The others should be. Okay. I'll deal with it later. I'm not going to fuss around with this. Clearly, once I get that in, I'll glue it in and that will be that. Alright. Some detail I need doing that. And I, and I really, really like the uh, Fritz helmet noggin. Really nice. <clears throat> All right, finding a bit of a cold here. All right, so we have the the axe. Looks really nice. I'm gonna put it here. Um, there we go. I should have painted the other one, but I'm gonna leave it this way. I know it's supposed to extend out, but I kind of like this. And even though this is going to be for the axe, I'm going to remove that, and I'm going to put the gun. Oops, but I need this. Why didn't Bandai include two more of these? I don't, you know, I don't understand. But, uh, I guess, yeah, parts and things like that, and they'll be just sitting there forever. I painted this gun this color, the other color, and then I covered up some of the parts, some of it, with uh, masking tape so I can give it a little bit more detail. Came out pretty nice, though. There we go. That is pretty nice. Now, this. Uh, I didn't glue this, I just put it in there. It's being held up by tack, but I just wanted to see how it works until we figure it out. But, oops, put it up the butt. And did I get it in there right? Yes, I did. And here she comes. That falls off. <laughs> Yeah, I, I gotta figure this out. I didn't. I, I'm just doing this temporarily speaking because later on I'm going to, yeah, glue it in again. But there she is. Let's squeeze it up there. There we go. Now let's see how long this battery will last on this kit. It should last maybe shorter because, no, 
it'll probably be lasting a lot longer because the other kit the other two guys I think they're about done but this will last a little longer now that I put this one on Wow that actually came out really damn good I have to admit <clears throat> I wasn't expecting the main body not to be darkened up like I did in the other one but I do like the pattern there is a two-tone of green you know so yeah it actually turned out better than I than I expected even if it was by accident um, I will it'll definitely benefit from from a little weathering chipping effect and of course uh, decals but I'm gonna have to do the weathering first later after I decal it a bit, I have to find out what I got that will work with this, especially especially from the 0080 era. It doesn't have to probably be it. It could probably be something else. But, yeah, it, it looks really good for what it is. What do you guys think of this? Okay, so here are all the parts that make up the 1-100 scale Master Grade a Gundam NT, or Gundam Alex from the Double O Gundam anim uh, War in a Pocket animated series. Yep, the pre-shading looks pretty good. Of course, seeing it individually is good in one aspect, but when you put them all together, hopefully it comes out even better. Um, before I took all these things apart, I, I top coated it, make sure they look good, and to protect it. Yeah, yeah that pretty much is okay. The face mask, I did uh, paint the eyelids around because the eyes are green. There's the mask, there's the chin right there, all the yellow parts right here, all the blue parts there, all the grays, the off grays, parts that mix up the weaponry, the shield, all the armor. I want to see how this comes out, you know, hang on a second because you have this. And then you have this. And that pre-shading effect looks really nice. As you can see. Um, granted, I didn't paint the inside. But the gimmick of it, where it pops open to fire the Gatling guns, that's a gimmick. I'm not planning to do that. However, after reviewing this, I'm going to spray paint the inside of this black. Um, or maybe gray, just so it's consistent, so it doesn't show this primer type thing. I just didn't realize until now. I have to do that because uh, while I was reviewing all the parts, um, I was uh, I forgot to do the crest on the forehead, which is blue. So that that's like one drop of paint inside the. Uh, inside the airbrush <clears throat> just so I can spray paint that or maybe put a little bit more drops and paint the blue on the other side that should be fine I don't see any problem with that um, I'm just carefully reviewing what I think I missed or what I think I may have to redo again um, I may end up I'm repainting some of the of the inner frame parts because I am noticing some off. I guess during me painting it, I missed something here and there. So a retouch up is required. No big deal in that. That should be fine. So this shouldn't take that much time for me to do that. So it'll probably take about an hour or so to deal with that. And uh, once I'm comfortable with what I got, let's put it together and see how it looks. And here it is. All done. The one 
100 scale Master Raid Gundam NT-1 Alex 2.0 is now complete. What do you guys think of that? Pretty good, huh? I decided to go with the bazooka and not the beam rifle because I don't know, I never did like the the overall design of the beam rifle. Granted I can probably put it on this hand right here. But I'm <clears throat> utilizing it in this position like this because this is pretty much um, the setup that I use when I go into uh, battle operations too. When I do a ground combat whether it's a 450 or 500 or 550 uh, matches and for those of you who understand what I'm talking about, you know what I mean I've always chosen the uh, Alex and I've been upgrading the Alex ever since in the game and uh, I really like it, it's overall design but everything that I did with the pre-shading and all that pretty good I, I kinda lightly did a little bit of uh, panel lining here and there not too much though um, just subtle I'm, I'm still working on it like I know there's some parts here and here um, some parts over here that I need like a little touch up here I was afraid to use the marker on the bazooka because I think I was going to mess it up but I'm going to use the um, weathering products not now this will be for later Uh, yeah, everything looks pretty bad, though. Not bad. I see, I had, I saw a little inconsistency with the pre-shading. This was a little darker than this. So I had, and since I've already put it on, I didn't realize it through the lighting. I had to mask the whole thing off and, and do a little spray painting here and there just to, uh, even it out. But the pre-shading really come on those. Especially in the bazooka. Shoulders great. Um, I'm not fond of the hand that's holding on to this. I think this is actually the trigger hand for the beam rifle. There's the another hand that will probably work well with this guy. So I may end up replacing the hand uh, the grip on this hand with the other one and utilizing it. Yeah, this this is really nice how it came out. Um, gimmick wise, I know it has that machine gun thing that you can actually bring this up and open it up like that, but in all due fairness, that's just a gimmick. I'm not really interested in that. And for those of you who are asking me <coughs> if I'm going to use the Chobam armor. <clears throat> no. And maybe yes. I mean, it's it, it's a pain. It, it's a shame that I'm gonna have to not paint it and leave it there. I may end up using utilizing it again, but I don't like the color. I want to try something different. But for now, I kind of like how this came out. This is a beautiful looking kit. I forgot how beautiful the Alex was. I remember the original Alex model kit that <clears throat> was great in its overall look but obviously I remember how bad the knees were and it kept on bending backwards so I had a hard time keeping it, keeping it straight and all that stuff. I'm glad that they were able to figure it out in this guy and adding all those extra features and, and detail so this is a home run for those who are a big fan of uh, Alex. It's been a long time coming. I should have built this when it first came out, but I'm glad that I waited this long to actually work on it and enjoy it, as you can see right here. And with that, I'm happy to say that this concludes the build of the War in the Pocket Christmas build episodes that I've been working on since, of course, December of 
2021 and it would have been done before that time before the year was over unfortunately due to unforeseen events I couldn't continue but at least I hope this makes up for it with what you see here so I'd like to thank you all for watching my build of these two guys I appreciate your time and effort and I hope everyone had a great holiday season I hope I had a, everyone had a great New Year's I hope this year is uh, going to be the best year for everyone and I hope that to, that you know this inspires you to do other kits that you know you like to see in the future Thank you again for watching, and what can I say, but stay tuned for more Gundam models yet to come. You all have a great day.